at the beginning, there was only darkness. And people spent a long time inside, sitting on a sleeping bench and staring at each other in the eye. Sometimes this life of spending time inside and staring at each other got to be too much. So much that they would get angry with how bored they were. And at that point, the people would decide to throw a party. A party where all sorts of games were played. Games for girls, games for boys, for men, for women, streamers and lights. And then, there were games for adults. One such game was called the dimming of the qusla. You see, a qusla works with a long wick. And when that wick is dampened, all the light that comes out is murky. A murky kind of light where you can't see what's happening on the other side of the room. And you can only just barely make out what your own hands are doing. And at that point, any fantasy went. Any sexual fantasy that you had, you were allowed to follow. You could chase a person you were never allowed to chase before. You could change genders. You could even sit in the middle of the room and just tickle yourself with a feather. Any fantasy went. So one woman noticed that over the years that she played the game, the same man kept coming to her. And did they get to know each other? The ways that they got to know each other in this murky darkness were unreal. They were lovers for years. Until one day the woman got a funny feeling about this. But the rules of the game were that when the lights came back up, no one was allowed to speak about what had happened during the game. But this woman, full of foreboding, had to find out who this man was. And so the next time they played the dimming of the lights game, she dipped her fingers in a cold kutsu so that they were covered in black soot. And sure enough, her lover came back to her. And she streaked his face with the black soot and they did all the things that they knew how to do so well. And when the lights came back up, to her shock and horror, she saw that it was her own brother streaked with soot across his face. <laughs> how could she? How could he? She packed herself a small bag and lit a torch so that it was bright and she took off across that dark tundra. How could she have let that happen for years? And her brother, still lusting after her, chased after her. He didn't have enough time to light anything. He only just barely got a little light going and he ran too. They ran so passionately, the brother and the sister, that they began to lift off the ground and they spun up into the sky and the sister became Sukhinuk, the sun, and the brother became Aninak, the moon. They say that the brother and the sister are always running, but they will never meet. This was an old story that I told you.